The Blue Jackets played so bad tonight that Nationwide Arena is actually considering just strictly hosting concerts from now on. That's today on Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Hayden Heilsorn. With me is my co-host, Jay Foster. We're here to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of your favorite team in ours, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before you go on, thank you for making this your first listen every day. Locked On Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms. We're free right here on YouTube. Hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We are free on the SiriusXM app, and uh, as I said, wherever wherever you get your podcast. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for get uh, for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Sorry, it is a late one here. We are recording after the Blue Jackets just got dismantled by the Detroit Red Wings. Jay, I, I mean this. I've probably been to safely. 100 Blue Jackets games in my lifetime, and this was like bottom five worst game experience I've ever seen. It didn't start good with just any – for first of all, this always comes with playing the Red Wings, any original six team really, but it was a home game for the Red Wings, so that's never good for just just the in arena, just atmosphere. That's that's always annoying, and, and I think that – absolutely contributed to the way the Blue Jackets played tonight, without a doubt. I think when you look at how many new players the Blue Jackets actually have, they maybe have not seen an away an away crowd like that. So that was a little shocking. And then the game just unfolded so poorly there in the second period. Um, two backup goalies, one with a lot more experience than the other. And, uh, yeah, James Reimer records his 29th career shutout at Nationwide. Blue Jackets lose 4 nothing. I, I watched the game in full at the arena. You watched it on TV. I'm sure it didn't look any better on TV. But just what were your initial thoughts when you watched our favorite team just get dismantled by the Red Wings? I mean, it started out okay, and I was like, oh, this is frustrating. Uh, because they outworked the Red Wings in the first period, and then it went from emba- it went from frustrating to annoying to just embarrassing. Like, did anyone have a good game on on the Blue Jackets? Like, maybe a couple of people, but it started with poor goaltending, and that's not necessarily on Spencer Martin, but. It's frustrating to go from having two games of extremely solid play from Elvis. He's sick. You can't help that, obviously. Spencer Martin gets thrown in. I would have started Jack Greaves. I really would. Um, and I get why they didn't. I get why he didn't get put in after the 4 nothing goal. Like, obviously, Martin didn't allow any more after that. But, like, just... We've seen worse Blue Jackets games in recent history. Like, it wasn't as embarrassing as allowing Zach Cassian to score a wraparound goal, which they did last season. It wasn't embarrassing as Tage Thompson's, like, four-goal first period last season. Like, there have been more embarrassing Blue Jackets games, but this is an early contender for just, like, most embarrassing loss of the season. It was, I think, in you said it right, best in text, I think. Just pathetic. Just embarrassing. You know, it was, they had a good first period and everything just fell apart immediately. As as soon as they went into the second, they couldn't stop taking penalties. Were the penalties, like, there was a couple of soft calls in there, a couple of weak calls, but, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that the officiating lost them this game. The penalty kill lost them this game. The fact that no one could win a damn face-off lost them this game. Uh, And the fact that this team is built to score and couldn't score on the shambling corpse of James Reimer pathetic embarrassing like and i know it's game three of the season and i'm struggling not to like overreact here but we needed a bigger jump after they somehow beat the beat the rangers they got embarrassed by the flyers the home opener and now this what like what 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 are we doing here what is what is the response to this gonna be because there's a lot of serious red flags that i am starting to see um, and I don't know what the answer is, except something has to change. 
Um, I'm pulling up the the shot attempts and possession numbers now to see if anyone actually had a good game. Um, and the answer is some people. Uh, the line A Fantilli Texier line was good or not terrible. David Juracek had a really good game. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau had a fair game. Um, everyone apart from that, like, Sieberson, I think, has been handcuffed by dealing with Adam Boquist. Um, I don't like that pairing at all. Provorov had a rough game. Gabranson was only the second worst defenseman on the team, uh, which I guess is a plus. He didn't allow, he didn't, like, score an own goal off his own shin pads or anything. So, like, progress, I guess. But, like, man, I miss Zach already. And he's only been gone for two games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just about to also – I was about to lead this episode by saying clearly the Blue Jackets have missed Zach Wierenski, but whether he's taking cheap shots from guys or whether he's just playing the game of hockey, I, I'm almost at a point now, and I can't blame him for this. I can't – it's not his fault, obviously. He would be out there if he could, but the Blue Jackets just have to learn to play without Zach Wierenski. Like, that's just a, a reality. They, they are too good – or at least we believe that their decor is too good to just crap these games away, Jay. Like, it's like this just was been bad. The offense was terrible. The offense was brutal. The possession numbers may have looked good uh, on the page for, you know, Texier, Fantilli, and Line A, but to the eyes, that line was was atrocious. They were not able to – sustain offense at any point tonight nobody was it felt like the blue jackets were completely out of a a rhythm out of sync every single pass was at the feet off the like way out ahead of the guys like it just was was clear that the blue jackets were not playing a good team game tonight and again you're absolutely right this is game three later in this episode we're gonna I think we're going to come down and and try to not overreact and be like, oh, the Blue Jackets are out of the playoffs. Because I honestly had this moment in the first period there. I was like, you know, the Blue Jackets could win this game tonight, and I'm probably going to think they are destined to go to the Stanley Cup playoffs and win a Stanley Cup playoff series. Like, that's that's how silly we are as fans. Like, there's, there's 79 more of these things left. So, at the end of the day... I think you can kind of chalk this game up to the Red Wings just came in with a great game plan. They, they were on every, they were, they were relentless. They had relentless pressure on the Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets didn't know what hit them. The Red Wings had just came off playing the New Jersey Devils. And then they had just gotten a win against the Tampa Bay Lightning. They are at a different point in their season already. I feel like in terms of where they're at momentum wise and they knew coming into this game, they had a chance to beat the blue jackets and they did. They took advantage of some power plays. Uh, The blue jackets had seven penalties tonight. That's, that's That's not too many penalties, like soft calls, whatever. If you're taking that many penalties, like something's got to change. They allowed two power play goals and especially don't take penalties. If a, you're one of the best penalty killers, on the team, Sean Corrali, who I think had at least two minor penalties tonight. And don't take penalties if you know your penalty kill's not good. Because at the minute, the Blue Jackets are struggling on penalty kill. Like, that's just how it is. And everything about this game was just so annoying. And, like, I didn't mean to to cut you off there, but Jesus friggin' Christ. Like, (laughs) what are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, it was it was atrocious, and I mean, I do feel like the game. We'll we'll talk about more about this game and what went wrong with it in a second, but yeah, we there's so much more that we have left to say, and I want to hold my thought till after a pause here on Locked On Blue Jackets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is fast and an easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events with killer last-minute deals, views from your seat, all in prices, and their best guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. I 
promise you guys this is the best place to buy tickets. I was looking. I'm going out of town later this year, and I'm trying to go to an away Blue Jackets game. I don't know why after this performance, but I'm trying to go to a game, and I just was comparing Game Time versus another popular app, and I was like, holy cow. They are right what they say there. Best guaranteed prices. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked on NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem L O C K E D N H L for twenty dollars off. Excuse me, that's L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And the next partner that I want to tell you guys about is AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports a whole body health. I drink this thing still every single day. I gave AG1 a try because I was tired of taking so many supplements and wanted a single solution that supports my entire body and covers all the nutritional bases every day. I want a better gut health, a boost in energy, a boost in immune system support. I hated taking pills and vitamins and wanted a supplement that actually tastes really, really good. So if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. All right. Besides... Um, running into the woods and just digging a hole and sitting in it. What what do you do as a Blue Jackets fan right now? Because it, you, we have here in the bulletin, like, what went, what went wrong? Like, pretty much everything went wrong for the Jackets tonight. This is a game where Pascal Vincent absolutely, like, he he's he, it's nice having a coach like Pascal Vincent because he's so calm, so so steady up there at the podium. He he recognizes that his team was trying to get a little too fancy tonight with some of their offensive play, which I think is dead on. I feel like there were so many extra passes made, especially on the power play, because even though the Blue Jackets went on the penalty kill seven times, they also were on the power play five times. So it's like there's or excuse me, they're on the power play four times. One of those was a uh, fighting penalty a fighting penalty like what am I even talking about Hayden doesn't know puck uh a major penalty but Pascal Vincent admitted like this team tried to get way too cute so maybe they need to get down to the fundamentals but this is one of those games Jay where I do wish I do miss a coach like Tortorella who would just go to the podium and be like I hated what I saw tonight I'm not talking to you guys and see you later because he was the best at just like just turn and burn. Forget about this game. I think that's honestly the best thing you can do for yourself as a Blue Jackets fan. But besides everything, is there anything else that went wrong that you need to you need to talk about? Because I'm ready to throw this whole game away already. Yeah, and like that's the thing. I, there's there's an urge here for when you have a bad game, just like right, we're gonna throw the tape away. That's not who we are. That's not how we play. Um, and I do think there are like teachable things. In this game, um, and I think there are good things in this game as well. Colonel Marchenko had six shots, six of the Blue Jackets, 23 shots on goal. So, like, a full 25% of the shots came from Marchenko's stick tonight, which is great for Marchenko and kind of bad for everyone else. Um, Other things that went wrong, the power play looked like the power play of last year um, after what I thought was a very good power play against the Rangers. Obviously, I think they went one for one against the Rangers on the power play. Uh, Boone Jenner scoring a goal there. They looked uninterested. They looked clumsy. Um, just, I don't know. They clearly moved some of the um, personnel around. I like that they've split up line A and Goudreau, but Emil Bemstrom on that top power play unit and then on the fourth line for, ev- for every other shift, like there's something clearly not not clicking there. Um, it's frustrating because at the end of the day, not a lot of things changed from last game. They mixed up the fourth line. Um, you know, uh, they sat Olivier and Foodie. They brought Bemstrom and Ruslovic back in. And then everyone else also had a terrible game. So, like, I just, I don't get it. I don't, like, I would love to come into this with some kind of huge detailed analysis of, like, okay, this went wrong here. This went wrong there. But, like, 
it was basically the thing is, I think we were lulled into a false sense of security with the Rangers game because the Blue Jackets got outshot forty-two to twenty-one by the Rangers. But because Elvis was excellent and Boone Jenner scored a hat trick, no one remembers that the Blue Jackets got outshot. I think seventeen to four in the third period. Um, it's just it's it's the same Blue Jackets that we got in the last game, but the scoreline didn't go that way. You know, and this team, I've said it a million times. I think I've said it this literally this episode. This team is built to score goals. So when they don't score goals, that's a problem. You know, it's real easy to look at this. And like I did it at first. I looked at this and was like, well, obviously all of this is the is Spencer Martin's fault. And like, I never blame the goalie, but he had a bad game. He's allowed six goals in the first 40 shots of the season. Um, he needs to be better. Will he be better? I don't know. This might just be who Spencer Martin is. He was bad for Vancouver last season as well, um, but who's to say? Um, it's easy to sit there and blame the goalie, but the goalie's not going to score goals for you. You know, the goalie's not going to shoot pucks for you. If you're getting outchanced by the Detroit friggin' Red Wings, like, I said it, I said it on Twitter. Every single player on this team should be bag skated until they puke tomorrow. I, I, yeah, the, I know the Detroit Red Wings are still like the Red Wings in terms of like, like they still haven't done anything, especially under Derek Lalonde, their new coach who's in their second year. So I feel like Blue Jackets fans probably feel like they should be at the same place that the Red Wings are at. But the right, that's, that's is- the thing. I'm not, I'm not saying that like, oh, the Blue Jackets should have gone out and dominated. They should have been competitive against the Blue, the Blue Jackets and the Red Wings. I feel like are kind of on par with each other in terms of um, where they're at in rebuild and skill level. Like, Dylan Larkin made this entire team look silly tonight. Um, the Blue Jackets have way better players than Dylan Larkin. You know, they should they should not be doing that. So it's not that I'm like, oh, I can't believe they lost to a really good team. Like, also, it could be worse. The Toronto Maple Leafs are a contender for the Stanley Cup and they lost to the Chicago Blackhawks tonight, you know? So it could be worse. But they should be competitive against this team. And like outside of that first period where I think um, the shots were like nine to five or something. Yeah. Nine to five for the blue jackets to then come out in the second period, allow three goals, including two power play goals uh, within less than a minute of each other. Like that's unacceptable. And, And I know it's early in the season. I know that it's a new coach, it's new systems, it's new personnel. Like, some of this stuff will work itself out when Zach Wren- hopefully Zach Wrenski's back. The Blue Jackets don't play again until Friday, so hopefully he's uh, he's ready to go by then. But like, I just I I'm so annoyed by this loss, and maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I should, you know, be chill and move on. But I don't know if there's anything that we can take from this game and be like, okay, they've got that to build on. I have a bunch of things in this game that I'm like, okay, change this, change this, change this. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, there's a lot that needs changed. I mean, I th- I think you're right. Emil Bemstrom getting top power play minutes tonight and only having one shot on goal is crazy because he was this guy in preseason that led the team in points. And it was because he was shooting. He was shooting. He was putting pucks on net. And like he even said in post game interviews, yeah, I'm trying to focus more on just getting getting my shot on goal because when he gets his shot on goal, it gets past the goalie, and like good things happen for the Blue Jackets. And tonight, it just seemed like he was the player that Pascal Vincent had in mind when he was like, we were trying to get too cute as a team because so many moments tonight, I'm like. What is Emil Bemstrom doing not shooting the puck right there? Like, he had one shot tonight. That's a little ridiculous to me. And, yeah, I, again, over – honestly, yeah, Spencer Martin, I would have started – I also would have started Jed Greaves over Spencer Martin. I think Jed Greaves has proven to this point that he is good enough to be the Blue Jackets' backup when they have an injury – like, it's not like we're giving him the keys to the franchise right now. He's too young for that. I understand that. But he did a good job against Toronto last year. He had a good preseason. Like, give Jet Greaves a chance to play, especially early in the season. He does nothing for you sitting on the bench. 
or, or at least put them in the game after it's four nothing because that game I can't was believe over. they didn't pull like and i know it's kind of a moot point because man like the fourth goal was the last one he allowed but like how do you keep him in that game there's still time for you to pull it back uh, just i don't i don't get it it, it's beyond frustrating. Something else I've just realized, um, and again, sorry to, to cut you off, but I'm looking at five-on-five five ice time for the Blue Jackets. Um, Patrick Laine had the fourth lowest five-on-five five ice time. He only played 9.37 of, of even strength time, which a part of that is probably because the Blue Jackets were on the penalty kill so much, but if you're... The only players that played fewer minutes than him were Bemstrom, Roslovic, and Damon Severson, who didn't play at all in the third period. So I'm wondering if Severson is hurt, uh, which that would just be, you know, fantastic news. Hey, someone else is injured. Friggin' Blue Jackets hockey. Hooray. Um, how is Patrick Lyon not leading this te- the, the forward core in, in ice time? Like, I don't... I don't get it. I like Pascal Vincent. I want to give him a chance. It's very, very early for me to say, you know, just throw throw everything away, get rid of him. But he does make some truly baffling lineup choices. We've had three different games and we've had three completely different lineups. So it's like if 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 Pascal Vincent is using this first week, first two weeks of the season as like a makeshift preseason, that that's okay with me. But you got to get some results. You got to find some answer. And it feels like the Blue Jackets don't really have an answer. And again, I think you got to get used to playing without Zach Rensky because let's be honest, he's injury prone. Um, and yeah, I just, I, people are going to pin this game on Patrick Line. They're going to pin every bad loss on Patrick Line because he's out there. And when he gets beat, it looks bad. But the truth is, he, he's going to bounce back. He's going to be fine. I still think he's an option at center for this team. I still think maybe, maybe he's not the top line center because face-off, again, another bad night in the face-off dot, 27% for him. He he you know was 3 of 11 from the face-off circle. So he needs to do better there, and he's now minus 3 on the year, so which is the worst on the team. So – Need to clean that up. Maybe you maybe you slot him back in the lineup, but I'm okay if he keeps being ran at center. Um, and yeah, so we're kind of up against it on this next break here. So we're gonna talk about anything good that we can think about in the last segment before we just move on with our week. Uh, it's gonna be a long three days and before the Blue Jackets play again before another game day. So. We'll try to leave you with some positive thoughts because this one was just just horrendous. Yeah, we'll do that here in, in a second on Locked on Blue Jackets. Snap into the NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, There's no better time to get in on the action. It's an app that's super easy to use. I use it pretty much every day as responsibly as I can, as I should. There's a wide range of betting options on there, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel official partner of the NFL. All right. We are trying to put a a little – a little lipstick on a pig here, I guess, is the best way to put this one because this game was just – it was so bad. It was so bad for Blue Jackets fans. And I i i applaud those that stuck around. It was one of those games, like, in the arena, they were putting Blue Jackets fans on the video board and, like, them getting on the video board was the highlight of their night. You could tell. I'm like, I'm like how are these people so happy? It's like, oh – is because they're on the video board. And putting somebody on the video board is always going to bring joy to their life. So that was awesome for them. But um, talking about the good things in this game, you're absolutely right. Kirill Marchenko was a beast. That man was getting shots from all over the ice. And, yeah, he was, he was in my opinion, like he was their number one player tonight. Like he, he seemed to be generating. He seemed to be hustling. He seemed to be moving at that quote-unquote pace 
that Pascal Vincent is looking for. Uh, another guy that had a good game, uh, Ken Johnson. I thought Ken Johnson looked okay. I thought, uh, you know, he was minus one tonight, but for getting 14 minutes of ice time, uh, I, th- I thought he looked pretty good. He, it seemed like he was trying to give the puck to his teammates in crucial areas where they had opportunities to score and they just didn't cash in. And it just overall as a team, again, that first period and really the first 10 minutes of that game, Jay, the Blue Jackets just look like if they would have just gotten one of those goals to get past James Reimer, I think the game unfolds in a completely different manner. And they just couldn't. They just absolutely couldn't. And I'm sure there's plays there that they'd all like to take back. But even though they had a good first period, you and I both said, previewing this game, the Blue Jackets need to play a consistent three periods. And they didn't do that. They didn't even, not even close to a consistent three periods. But um, yeah, this is the eighth time the Blue Jackets have gotten shut out in the last 365 days. This is, that is bad. This is still like bad and stinky. But uh, any other thoughts that you have on this one, good or bad, honestly, at this point, we're supposed to be doing good, but it's hard. It's hard to think of any good things, really. Yeah, I like I like the the Gaudreau, Marchenko, Boone Jenner line was good. Um, the I like the Fantilli line, a Texier line, but I still think if you want to run that line, it needs to have Fantilli down the middle. I know that Pascal Benson keeps saying that his his systems don't have specific wingers and centers. They just they, someone takes the face off and then they go. But if you you either have to split Fantilli and line it up. Or Fantilli's got to go down the middle because that's he's just too good to have him on the wing. I don't think his game is suited to the wing, and I think we kind of saw that tonight. Um, he didn't have a bad game, but he wasn't as um, noticeable as he was in that first game, I thought. Um, I like the Johnson and Sillinger pairing. Um, I don't know that I'd put Justin Danforth on that on that other wing, but I like those two guys together. I think they're kind of building something that could be could be pretty fun. Um, the defense was the defense. David Yerichek continues to impress. Um, he was even on the night, uh, played eight, almost 19 minutes, um, didn't have a shot on goal, didn't have uh, any points, but I thought held himself extremely well. Um, I actually didn't mind the Juracek Provorov pairing. I think that was probably the best pairing. Um, Bean and Gabranson is fine. Avoko Stevenson was actively bad, but I like Provorov and Juracek together. I still think that the ideal top four is Wierenski, Juracek, and then Proverson, but I didn't hate uh, Provorov and and Juracek. I think that was probably one of our strongest. Uh, that was probably our strongest duo of players tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Provorov had a penalty there that I thought was kind of, what are you doing? Just leave your stick down. The play, you're out of the play there. Um, but yeah, he he looked he looked just okay to me personally. I I didn't. Yeah, but really... everyone else looked so bad that I'm like, oh, just okay. I'll take yeah. it. You know, <laughs> sometimes yeah. you have a game and you're like, oh, this guy was average. However, everyone else was terrible. So I guess average has become good. Yeah, and I wonder if we see uh, Andrew Peak again sometime soon because, like, you know, the, clearly Pascal Vincent just loves to just have guys in and out of the lineup. I know Peak looked atrocious in that first game against the Flyers, but now he sat too. And you've got to sit Boquist. Like, you've just got to. Um, I don't know whether it's that he's playing on his wrong side and he's struggling, um, but. I just don't know. You've got to you've got to sit Boquist. Um, are they trying to trade Peak? Maybe, but something something's got to change. And I don't think you need a massive kind of overarching. Okay, let's just throw all of the lines away and start from scratch. Um, you know, we've seen that before, where the Blue Jackets have had games, and you're like, okay, well, we're just going to burn this lineup down and start from the top. Um, I don't think you need to do that. I think there's a lot of very fixable things here. A lot of fixable, a lot of things that you can fix with tweaks. You know. Flip flop line and Fantelli. Um mix up the deep pairings, but it feels like they're so close to getting everything to click 
And unfortunately, with a young team, sometimes it just goes how it goes. Um, and sometimes how that goes is you let James Reimer get a shutout. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. Again, I kind of, over the course of this episode, I've kind of talked myself down from uh, from pre-recording the episode where, again, I was texting Hayden and I was like, I'm so mad. I'm so ready to pop off in this episode. Like, <laughs> I have so many opinions. Um, but it could be worse. It could be better. The Flames are in town on Friday. That's their next game. We'll have to see what the response is like because they need a, they need a response of some kind. Otherwise, the season just starts to slip away, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If if the, I mean the first four games the Jackets are playing at home and they're one and two, like that's not good. You need to get a win in front of your home fans. Again, I know it was a, it was they were playing in Joe Lewis Arena tonight. I mean the Let's Go Red Wings chant at the beginning of that game was louder than I've ever heard, and I've been to plenty of Blue Jackets Red Wings games. So there's clearly a lot of optimism around Detroit this year. They have had a they they have. They have like five, six legitimate like new faces that are like these guys have been playing on Stanley Cup contenders for years and now they're playing on the Red Wings for some reason. So for some reason, I think the Red Wings are going to be a lot better this year. And that reason is because they got just tons of new guys. And Alex Debrinkat didn't even score tonight. And he's he's going to be phenomenal for them. So, yeah, I, I'm just going to chalk this one up to. Uh, too many penalties, tried to get too cute, and yeah, those two things. You tried to get too cute, and you had way too many penalties. This is my last take, and this is kind of like a just burn the whole franchise down level take, but just hear me out because when the Blue Jackets lose at home and they have red pants on, I just – there's something that just looks bad about it. It looks like it's the old, it just, it looks bad. They, it, the uniform, they just look, it looks bad. I don't know why. It just, it bothers me. They teased me this year when I forget it was, was it maybe, I think it might've been Stanislav Sposal that went to like a rookie showcase and he had on the blue union blue Jersey with the union blue pants, which they've been rolling the union blue pants on the away Jersey now. And it looks fantastic. The blue on blue looks great. And they beat the Rangers in blue on blue the other night. So maybe consider that. Again, that's just my, you know, crazy. Hayden doesn't know puck. He doesn't know what to talk about here. He's just observing with his own eye. Get rid of the red pants. Maybe the red pants are cursed, yeah. (laughs) Maybe. Um, Do you have anything else before we uh, let people go on with their week here? No, I think I am. I think I am all opinioned out. I could go on, but for the sake of it being midnight and the sake of the listeners i will i will contain myself um but just what a stupid frustrating game to watch that was it was stupid it was frustrating let's turn the page and let's uh let's focus on tomorrow thank you for so much for checking us out today tomorrow jay and i are gonna look into the past and pick a we're going to dr- actually draft a lineup a blue jackets lineup we're going to take we can only take a a player drafted in the first round one player drafted in the second round third round fourth round etc it should be fun and uh, yeah just a little middle of the week change up the vibes because the blue jackets are not fun to talk about currently and uh, they can change it all on friday night locked on blue jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms we're free on youtube free on the sirius xm app my name is Hayden Halshorn. You can find me on Twitter at HaydenH971. You can find Jay on Twitter at underscore J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. You can also email us, LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. Thank you once again for listening, and until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.